Thank you so much for joining in Sprint 2 session on automating evidence collection and access management. Uh, glad that you're here. I'm Aarti and I'm part of the marketing team and I'm excited to bring on bring on stage our speaker for the day, uh, Rajiv, who is part of the solutions engineering team and has helped almost 500 plus customers uh, you know, get through their compliance program with Sprinto. And uh, he'll be sharing the nuances of the implementation process, how Sprinto can help solve the specific use case that you're having, and how uh, nuanced the product is to help solve some pain points that you might have. Now, this session is going to be recorded. And yes, I will be sharing the recording with you tomorrow. So not to worry, in case you miss something, you will have access to it. If you want to have a personalized understanding of how Sprinto can help your specific use case, please click, click on the banner to your right, and you can book a call with one of our uh, AEs who will be able to help take that forward with a much more uh, uh, you know, uh, specific customizable requirement. But for now, for the mid-market use case or like for companies that are more than 500 employees strong or like companies that are spread across multiple geos and dealing with uh, multiple use cases that are not fulfilled by, that are too difficult to be handled by the manual manner, uh, Rajiv is going to join us to help explain how Sprinto can help you fix it. Hey, hi, Arti. Thank you so much for this. Yeah, so right. just a brief. I'm give it right to you so you can take it forward from here. Fair. Yeah, I think yeah, just before, you know, like just starting this, you know, maybe like, you know, like at any point of time, if, you know, any of you have any questions, you know, feel free to type in, you know, we can probably you know, take uh, take all the, uh, you know, any questions that we have, you know, at the later end of the session. So let me start right away. Okay. Okay. I'm hoping the screen is visible to everyone. So this is how uh, like the Sprinto dashboard unit looks like, and this is the product how it is. Now, what uh, we can probably start here is uh, what I'll do is you know, I'll probably give like a brief introduction of what you know a tool does, and you know, and then probably dive uh, deep into uh, like you know, the, the specific use case that we want to talk about today. So you know, like uh, Sprinto is an, uh, a compliance automation platform, you know, more of an automated GRC that we have. Now we uh, we support you know more than twenty plus frameworks as of today, and this is how you know the framework section looks like, right? So where uh, you can actually enable you know any framework that you'd want to get uh, compliant with. You, know, you can actually see what are the different criteria, you know, those uh, frameworks talk about, you know, which you would want to get audited against, right? Now. Uh, what we have, you know, in Sprinto is you can actually see the, you know, mapping of all the different uh, frameworks and their, you know, uh, uh, criteria as well. Now, for every criteria that a framework, you know, demands you to get compliant with, you can also see, you know, how we are probably like, you know, keeping a track of this. So, you know, what we have is, you know, like a control framework. We can actually see these are the, you know, different kind of controls that you as a company would have to run, you know, in order to meet, you know, the specific, you know, like uh, an extra clause, you know, 5.1 of ISO. For, for that matter, okay. And now in Sprinto, you can actually see, you know, we have like a lot more, you know, like automation, and you know, uh, we have a lot more automated checks, you know. And this is the uh, framework on which, you know, like Sprinto is capturing those evidences, okay. And uh, we also have, you know, like a common control framework, you know, where uh, you will get a like a list of all of the controls that are running in your account, okay. And then you know, you can uh, probably, you know, just by meeting. These controls one you, once you know you can comply to many frameworks, right? Because you can see you know so this particular control is mapped to ISO and SOC 2 and PCI as well. So if you just comply to this control once, you know you can actually meet the requirements of you know these three frameworks in one shot. So it it actually uh, you know helps you to you know get audited for it and not, you know not try to do the same activity again and again, right? Which probably take a toll on you know like your team and you know like probably keep you in a state of you know like uh, just doing audits over year, year on year. Okay. Now this is how the dashboard looks like, you know, where you can see what are the different you know controls that are running and what's the control health status, you know. So like right now on this uh, account you can see that it's actually at a 40, 49 percent. Okay. And then they don't like for every uh, framework in order to run, you know, there are different modules on which you know you have to run these controls. Okay, now how would Sprinto will be able to, you know, know how, uh, how or what controls do we need to run on this, you know, is through these integrations that we have, right? So as of today, you know, we have more than, uh, like, you know, 80 plus integrations with you know, various SaaS tools, you know, that our company uses, you know, which, which can actually help you complete, you know, like, or uh, 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 you know, meet the requirements of any framework that we support. Okay, 
so uh, having you know given you like a brief intro of the product okay if you have any questions you know feel free to ask okay now let let's probably you know deep dive into the you know specific use case that we want to discuss today which is actually access control right and and now having worked with you know so many uh, companies so far what we have seen is right like access controls is really you know like a uh, like a challenge that every company faces as you, you know grow in size right like there are uh, various business functions that come into play right like maybe the sales team is using some tools that you know the information security or the grc team is not aware of right now how do you really you know keep a track of hey and uh, who are the different people that have access to it right and and how are you really uh, you know dealing with their onboarding you know their offboarding flow and things like that right now that becomes like a huge challenge you know even from a governance standpoint right because from a you know like your uh, internal uh, information security posture you would want to ensure you know that, that when people are you know coming in or you know probably they are you know, like letting go you know their accesses are also being revoked you know like within a specified sla right like th that would ensure that you, know, you are keeping your compliant state okay now uh, how do we you know like uh, get to that place here is so what we uh, in sprint you know we actually integrate with you know your hrms providers or your you know id providers just to fetch a list of all of the employees that are there right so as of today you know we have more than like you know i think 40 plus integrations with you know various hrms tools or you know like idps to you know fetch a list of all of your employees now once we have that you know what you can actually see is we we get a list of all of your employees in sprinto and also in you know, a their role okay and this uh, and like their reporting manager now this role is something that will you know like become more useful as we you know discuss more uh, on this session okay so once we have a list of you know all of the users you know we are you know then running various checks on every employees okay now once we have this now how do we want to ensure you know the access is being controlled okay is you know like through our integrations we will be able to you know like uh, fetch a list of all of the users you know that have in, uh, you know like uh, an access in either aws you know bitbucket github or any of the system that we have an access to now uh, access control you know can be monitored in two ways you know like one could be you know like uh, if you if you already do like a role based access control today right like probably like every software engineer in our company has access to you know github okay so how do you really you know configure that and how do you really ensure that you know only those people are getting access to it, right this becomes like a lot of uh, challenge and you know, like through sprinto you know what we have seen also is when companies really you know appreciate the benefit you know where they can actually keep a track of it even in functions that they don't have a direct control over right because you know probably like your information security team wouldn't be aware of you know like how many tools the engineer team is using right or probably are they like you know uh, regularly doing access reviews right like uh, at a specified interval and if they are you know, probably you know it's being uh, done more you know through like uh, like you know google sheets or excel sheets and you know, probably done in a more of a manual way which is you know more error prone right now through through the integration that we have you know we can actually do this more in real time and also like you know like uh, with a added benefit of uh, you know getting this uh, evidence across to the auditors when an audit comes okay so you can you know like you can define your access control as to how do you want to do it on sprint okay so we you know provide you the ability of you know assigning like a system owner for every critical system so you can configure how access is managed you know whether it's you know like more of a role based access control or it's more of a discretionary access control you know through like a ticket based you know either through jira or clickup or asana or or what you have not okay so this is something you know, that you can define okay and we'll be able to help you with it okay now uh, how do we do that is like you know let's say we have an integration you know for example with your uh, like you know google workspace and probably let's you know try to define the uh, access control system here so for example you know for github i would ideally want to you know probably do it you know more through like a role based access system and i would want to define hey like you know only the software engineer would you know need access to it or probably like only the cto needs access to it now what would happen as a result of this is like i'm defining that only these roles should have access to github okay now what this will do is like you know when you go through the github app users you know you'll be able to see you know whether you know their access is valid or not okay now what would happen is like here you'll be you'll see this check passing only for users you know, who have a like a role that we defined in the previous menu okay now once they don't have it you know you you have a choice which you can take right for example you can actually see that this user doesn't have it now why it doesn't have it you know then you can take a call other you know like do you want to just define this as a special case you know probably just for you know like a billing purpose a finance person needs access to it right or probably someone who shouldn't have access to 
this system has right so then you you have your task cut out right you can probably then go back to that system and remove this user access from there okay or you can assign this user a role or you can just like you know add these uh, users existing role to the uh, you know system that we added right now okay so this is you know more on the lines of how you can conduct you know like role based access system okay same you know goes for your uh, like you know for example like notion have set it up you know more from a uh, you know like a, a ticketing based okay so here you can even you know validate their access through a ticketing tools uh, for example let me just show you you know how the configuration looks like so for example in notion you know like i went and i chose that you know like they should have uh, you know like a ticket based access through jira okay so what i do is i probably have some projects which are uh, like you know being run in jira where when a user wants some access you know they, it actually follows through a ticket you know like that ticket gets uh, an approval you know either through their manager or you know like a central it team probably manages the approval flow okay and once that uh, you know ticket has been uh, like approved is when you probably like you know give that access and that's something you know, that you can actually automate through 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 sprinter so for example you know under notion we have all the, already the list of users that we fetch okay and you can then you know validate their access through a request ticket okay for example you know like if you want to fix this you can you know just map a ticket already you know from the list of you know project that we are running okay so that you can you know probably just map a ticket that you believe you know was used to give this user access and that's something you know, that you can do so now you can see right so now that uh, you know that check started passing because you know we have now defined hey this user access is validated through this particular ticket so that you know you also have a trail or you know or a record of how the access was given to this user okay now uh, you know uh, moving forward you know we saw you know how the onboarding can actually work now going forward you can also you know conduct like access reviews right uh, like conducting periodic access reviews is also something that's you know like it's it's becoming more of a challenge you know and it, it's being done you know more of in a manual fashion today how sprinto solves for it is you know once we have an active integration with your system we'll be able to you know like uh, uh, provide you the access reviews uh, in, in, in an automated fashion because we already know which these users are okay and once you have it you know you can even conduct like audit privileges on these users right so for example here it's uh, like a user access review that's already done you can see right which of those are admin you know which of them are not and you can also see you know whether they are active or if you know some of the users have been deactivated in the past like you no know, quarter or uh, whatever frequency you set it on you can also review that okay and this particular access reviews happens every 3 months okay so there's something that you know can even get automated right so you don't really have to uh like you know go back to the teams to you know like just fetch that user list every month right this is this is what we have you know seen some like you know like uh, a lot of our customers like having done this you know manually they actually appreciate this a lot more you know where they don't really have to go behind like multiple teams to you know get, get just get this user access review okay now so you know we actually covered the onboarding part of it you know like how you can probably automate it through ticketing tools or you know like conducting like role based access control and then you know, we also covered you know how you can do periodic user access reviews uh, in an automated fashion now let's actually you know see how we can you know like probably do an offboarding bit right so how we can uh, once like you know for example let's say i you know, like say like oh, i offboarded someone okay for example you know for this account i've already already offboarded like you no know, like let's say like these three users okay so you can do that in sprinto uh, and like you know once we have an integration with an hrms system this uh, like you know this offboarding rate can also you know get automated or you know we can fetch it from your uh, hrms so for example you know here you can just come here you know you can offboard this particular user let's say like you know this user last date was yesterday which is 17th okay now once you do that uh, we already had a you know uh, uh, like an integration by telling hey which of these systems the user has a active account in because we already know that right through through uh, through whatever i showed you right now now once you offboard them in under the people you will also you know get alerts as to hey this user access needs to be revoked because you have uh, like you know offboarded him for example like you know here you can see uh, under michael so you'll be able to see that you know this user uh, access should be revoked so this is something that we are even alerting you so as to ensure you know that the all the uh, user access controls are 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 being done okay so you you'll get a alert you know from sprinto in terms of you know, in an email uh, you know like hey this user needs to be removed okay and then it's your activity to ensure hey this particular user can get like you know, revoked and once you do that this check would start uh, like you know, passing again so we are you know keeping you uh, alerted as to you know whenever like a user gets offboarded you either from the hr team and you wouldn't probably like know hey uh, whether you know their access gets revoked uh, across the entire you know suite of systems that you have 
okay so that was the automate uh, like you know the role based one now you can also you know like uh, do uh, do a uh, you know like a uh, like a revoking thing you know from ticket you know so you can even like you know map ticket for all the revoked accounts so for example you know like this user already got revoked now you can map the ticket that was even used for the revoking right because this is how it usually works uh, you know in in our experience you know, like usually uh, users can or you know the hr team members can create I, uh, tickets for it teams listing down hey this is a particular user which you know probably will get offloaded sometime down the road and you need to ensure that you know their access is getting revoked so this ensures that you know you have a mapping of the ticket that was used you know for that as well so this is how you know the offboarding can also you know get get automated okay now you know this is how you know this is being done okay now how this all of this activity you know like makes more sense for you is you know like under the audit section so this is the security hub you know where you are actually implementing your security program on sprint off now once the you know steps on security hub are being done is when you you're probably you know it's it's a time for your audit to happen right now what would happen here is like whatever you do on sprinto you know like from what i showed you you know the framework criteria the control and the checks that that are that needed to be run for it you know you can actually see all of the story you know getting culminated under the evidence section on the audit dashboard so what happens is you know like we have a, a audit section which the auditors can use you know you can even invite your own auditors to conduct audit here okay you know so this will you know provide them like a gated access to only you know, the user that you would want to invite here okay you can even um, um, you know like uh, schedule your audits you know you can select your evidence collection period for various audits that you have we have you know like one created here for soc2 okay now what happens under the evidence section is you know like against the different control criteria for soc2 you can also see you know which are the control that you are running okay and when the audit time comes you know you don't really have to you know probably tell the auditor or they need don't need to ask you hey these are the things that you would want to see because everything is you know, then programmed into sprint out right so you can actually see hey uh, how do you meet this cc 1.1 is by running you know these many controls and once you do all of that action under security hub you can actually see what is the evidence against this control and this is what the auditor would even you know get a access to okay so they can actually see what's your policy and how it like you know helps you meet this particular control and they wouldn't really you know be like a multiple back and forth between you and the auditor now let's say if they don't really uh, agree to or you know if they have additional questions so they can even uh, you know contact you through through the you know like audit portal that we have okay so you know we can ensure that all of the you know conversation that happens during during the audit are you know being managed on 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 one platform right so you, they can you know even message you based on you know like a control level or any question that they have you know for any audit now uh, what happens you know for your uh, you know, let's say what we discussed so far right for example for your access control systems right like uh, the one that we saw so for example you know we have the control number like 35 right so probably this is the uh, common criteria that uh, soc2 needs and this is a control that you won't want to see right entity ensure that the access is being revoked or terminated and we can actually keep a track of this you know through sprint okay so this is how you know the uh, evidence would look like you know like hey these are the user that were uh, uh, there you know who got uh, terminated during the period and you know like what's the system deactivation status right so for example here i haven't really deactivated them from the you know source system itself but you know this is how it would look like okay and let's say you know if you are probably using like a ticketing tool so like i think that evidence is probably not here on this particular uh, uh, account but this is how only the evidence would look like okay so once you have a ticketing tool you know let's say you had a asana ticket that was assigned to remove the user access this is how you know it would uh, look like okay and then the like you know the auditors can then go ahead and and conduct the audit and you know they can then issue you you know like a report as well okay yeah so i think this was you know like what i uh, basically wanted to show show you guys like you know as part of today's uh, webinar but yeah feel free to like you know ask any questions or you know we can probably take it yeah. so over to you arti Uh, yeah, thanks, Rajiv. Thank you for that. Uh, there was one question from LinkedIn. I think this was already answered though, but uh, it's around access management and evidence presented. How how was it presented for auditors? Yeah, so yeah, I think I, I showed the auditor platform, right? So like, uh, uh, ho however, you know, you are doing the access control. You know, there are certain controls that get uh, like you know validated against that evidence, and that's being represented in a format that the auditor understands, right? 
so our auditor module is actually built in you know like conjunction and you know with 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 a lot of stakeholders and auditors themselves okay so you know it's actually built, built in a that way which can probably you know they can understand it better so i think i actually showed that but, but yeah okay uh, i don't see any other questions right now uh, if you do have questions please feel free to share it uh if you want to yes can we upload access list manually for certain applications which doesn't have any automation yeah yeah i think yeah that's actually possible let me yeah, that's like a great question uh yeah, this gives me you know some time to even like uh, probably share something yeah okay so let's say like i think it's like a great question you know, where probably you have some internal tools that you're using right and which probably uh, uh, you know they don't allow any api support or you know how would you want to you know get that user list added you know where uh, there is no integration right now how uh, sprinto actually solve for this is you know you can actually create like you know like mcas mcases which is you know more of a colloquial term internally used as like a manual critical access system so let's say you know have like an internal tool and you would want to add user accounts so you know we also have the ability for you to you know just add these accounts manually you know let's say if, if you have like like only like a couple of employees you can add it or you can you know do it through like a bulk upload through a csv okay so you know like it will actually work in the same fashion as we were doing you know for the uh, uh, like the uh, integrated systems you know you can add all of the user list in one shot okay and then you can even conduct user access reviews on them and you can even you know map all the uh, you know evidences that we saw so far Okay, their onboarding, uh, like you no know, details through ticket, okay, or or the offboarding bit. The only thing you know that would be missing here is you know when we offboard, you know, Sprint Two wouldn't know hey, you know whether their access is being revoked from the system itself because we aren't really communicating with that system, right? But yeah, at any point of time, you know, if you want to use this like as a single source of truth, you know, you have the ability to do so, and you know, you can even conduct periodic user access reviews and like you know offboard them. But yeah, like that, that's something you know, that you have to do on on the platform. Yeah, let me know if this helps, or you know, are there if there are you know any follow up questions on this? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Jay, you can also uh, reach out to Rajiv. Uh, his uh, LinkedIn profile is also there, so you can just connect with him. And uh, any other questions that you you have, uh, please please feel free to share it. We're almost at the time, uh, so keep that in mind as well. Uh, if you have anything very specific, you can reach out to uh, Rajiv at Sprinto.com. I'm just going to drop that here as well. And uh, if you would like to have an in-depth platform demo with our uh, our solution engineers, you can uh, click on the banner above, uh, and then you can you can schedule a call. Uh, we'd be happy to help you out with it. <laughs> All right. Uh, if that's that, then I think we can wrap this up. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, you know, we we are always interested at Sprint2 to help out, help and provide as much information as possible to infosec leaders so that they can make uh, informed decisions and have a good understanding of automation. So, if you have any other queries or if if there are any other gaps that you think need to be addressed or any solutions that need to be talked about further, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. And you can even uh, message me. My, my, I'm at rtsprint2.com, so I would be happy to help take that up and. Uh, all right. Uh, take care. Have a nice day. Thank you, Rajiv. Thanks for your time as well.